Hi, I'm Blair Gilbert, here for MrHardware.com and Gilbert's Pro Hardware in St. Clair Shores. I'm going to do a quick video on how to put a sump pump in a crawl space. I've done a few of these over my lifetime. I think the first one was when I was 14 years old. I put it too close to the outside foundation of our cottage on Harsons Island. 15 years later, it had created a sinkhole in the basement. All the sand filtering to the sump pit actually weakened the outside wall of my cottage. So try not to collect water right on the edge of your foundation. What we need here is our standard five gallon pickle bucket, perforated with a 3 16 drill bit numerous times, a cut your own size air filter. And what these are, these are kind of like plastic, impervious, nice inexpensive filters. I think this is 859s. We're going to cut this filter. We're going to wrap it around the bucket. We're going to use a couple of zip ties to secure it. We're going to go into the crawl space. We're going to dig a pit. We're going to get this as deep into the ground as we can. We're going to throw in a sump pump that really isn't real happy doing a short cycle in a little bucket here. But chances are this pump may only run once an hour or less than that. So I will take the damage just to have an automatic pump that will turn on and off in a bucket deep in the ground with a filter keeping the puddles out of my crawl space. So here's how we go. My buddy electrician, for one, when you're using zip ties, says always open them from the middle. That way they never fall out of the bag when you're not using them. And doing this video, we have to keep our cost to a minimum. So instead of buying the giant expensive four foot zip ties. I'm just going to put four inexpensive 22 cent zip ties together and I'm going to use them to hold the filter to the bucket. So now I got the filter on, I'm tightening up the zip ties. I like to evacuate out onto the lawn or into the grass. In our area here, when water goes to the street, it goes to the storm sewer, goes to the lake for free. It doesn't get filtered or processed. When you take and run storm water or ground water and you put it in the septic system, which is very convenient sometimes, when we take and put this safe water and we put it into our sanitary sewers, it overflows the sanitary sewers so that everybody's basement floods. By taking groundwater and sending it outside, water the lawn, send it to the ditch. Please, try not to send it to the sanitary sewers. The cities that are requiring that just don't get it or they're afraid too many people are putting unsanitary water out on the lawns. So make sure that's not a factor. We do not want septic water out on the ground where it can interfere with children and pets. Here it is, bucket, holes, filter, no holes in the bottom. No dirt's coming up from the bottom. All the ground water's gonna come in from the side and eventually this filter may clog, but it may take a very long time. We're gonna dig and bury the bucket. We throw the pump in. We're gonna have our hose pre-connected. We're gonna run the discharge line out on the lawn to the ditch, somewhere safe. And our pump is gonna run with a float, turn itself on and off. It is gonna short cycle. This is not the proper way to use a sump pump. However, it's a heck of a lot more convenient to have a pump with a float switch turn on and off than I've been using just a standard utility pump. I've had to plug in and unplug every 20 minutes to get the water down enough. Here's where our lowest lying water is. Now this whole area was under two inches of water. We believe it's rainwater coming in from the front of the property. Okay. It's okay, huh? Our 
pump, our garden hose is running out. What could possibly happen to us here is when this pump pumps this bucket dry, the bucket may try to float. Throw this hunk of concrete on top. So I can still see the pump, I'm not interfering with the float. So our filter and our bucket with all those holes is letting enough water in that we're not evacuating that bucket in 10 seconds like I've seen happen to me before. The pump would also be a lot happier if that pump was pumping through an inch and a half discharge line instead of just through a garden hose. Once we get the water pumped out of this area, I will then stand a chance on finding where the intrusion of water is coming from. This used to go to a septic field, there's a chance that the water is coming in on that. If so, I'll cut the cast iron pipe and I'll put a test plug in it and I'll plug it there. And this should work if it's anything like my other pumps. I should go 10, 15 years with this system because it's really not going to get used a heck of a lot. Here's our second run, brand new run on the fill. The water will be clear. The next time we come down here, it's muddy because I dug the hole. You'll be able to see the bottom of the pump. So there we go. Quick easy trick from MrHardware.com.